I know this is a long video, but please just stick around until the Frankie farming and the zombie crafting. I promise you, sounds crazy now, but you won't regret it. What is up, you amazing people? This is Nima, and today I want to talk about Deadcraft. This is a fun, interesting game, but it is full of duality, essentially. Um, before we get into that, though, I do want to remind you guys to please hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see me tortured. Anyway, <laughs> um, Deadcraft is a game that came out last week, and I was really torn on it. Usually, I have a rule. If I'm going to review a game, when I feel like I'm ready to do the review, take one more day and play it even more. And with this game, it, that was really uh, something that facilitated the review because I that extra day kind of changed my opinion of the game. Early on, this game, well, it, it has struggles and we will get to that. But first, let me just hop into the story. It's Probably the most basic part of the, the game in general. Now, for one, you are a half zombie, half human named Reed. You have this major issue with a, a leader of, of a settlement that is a, it's basically a giant city that is in, inside the these walls that are protecting that city from the apocalypse, essentially. The leader is Nebron, and you have this gigantic grudge against him. And in the beginning, you actually see you're, you getting your butt kicked and thoroughly um, expelled from the city, and you, you understand partly where that comes from, but the story actually goes a little bit deeper. You find out that your partner was killed by him, and at the other side of it, you yourself are half zombie, half human, which even in this world, kind of rare, actually really rare, you're the only one. So it's obvious that someone was experimenting on you. And so you're also low-key curious about that and issues with your mother, all of that tied up into one. That's basically the story for much of the game. That takes us to now the, I wouldn't say complicated, but far more dynamic aspect of the game. And that is just the gameplay itself. So if you ever thought like, hey, we should, I don't know, combine Stardew Valley, uh, a survival game, and Diablo... <laughs> you would then have a uh, dead craft the problem with i think this is is got to be the pacing it is uh, very slow and for somebody like me i i don't know i almost have to just rush through a game and just get through as quick as i can for the review as far as i can and this game does it, it does not play to that at all because it is very slow moving in a lot of ways and especially at the beginning you're trying to get your i don't know you're, you're trying to get your bearings about you and the first mission alone uh, not the very first, but really early on, it took me like so many attempts because the thing is, is you have a hunger gauge, a thirst gauge, and an energy gauge. And those three all have to be balanced. And of course your HP as well. But at the very beginning and, and really early on, you don't have much energy and everything seems to zap your energy and you don't have much resources to, to eat or to drink. And it seems like within the first few hours of the game, your biggest enemy is you. Like the zombies and all that that's fine whatever <laughs> deal with them but the fact that you can't walk halfway across the area before you need water you need food and you're constantly having to to build all that up and to maintain that and then you notice halfway through a mission your energy is gone I don't know how many times this one mission you have to go get this village elder and bring him back to the village. I had to do it so many times because I kept running out of energy. And so at the at the end of the day, I finally had to make sure that I just woke up, had all my energy, and then went and did the, the mission as fast as possible. Which by the time it was over, still had no energy. It, it was such a pain in the butt. And that's a lot of this game early on. And it really makes you detest it because there's a lot to this game. I mean, there's farming, there's crafting there's combat the whole half zombie thing i was talking about with the fighting oh it's so cool you have all these really cool super power-esque moves that you can do as your half zombie now the thing about that is though is you do have to feed your zombie side so there's a lot not, not only are you worried about your food hunger health and energy there's also a gauge that shows your human side and your zombie side and both of those kind of need to be reined in a little bit you you want a good balance and so to let's say use your super Superpower, your zombie powers, your uh, attack goes way up, but your defense drops. And the, basically the opposite happens when you have like human, like when you're almost all human. Great defense, bad offense. But 
to raise these gauges, you have to consume certain items. Put the zombie, it's like zombie meat, zombie blood. You consume that, it'll raise your zombie level. Uh, eat, you know, like regular fruits, vegetables, clean water, and that'll help your human side. But if you do have too much zombie on you, by the way, the local town will attack you. and People will come after you because, well, they think you're a zombie and you're in the apocalypse. Uh, and, and again, like, that's just one aspect of this game. And it's so <sighs> dynamic. Because uh, uh, another thing too to mention when we're talking about the village there's a wanted level so you can accidentally or purposely get a gta style wanted level after you to make this go down though you basically just have to go to your house and wait a few days and here starts the issue of what i mean and especially with it comes with pacing and crafting a lot of the game opens up and gives you more options once you're able to craft certain items and that's also unlocked by the game for the most part but the thing is is a lot of the resources that you need are not easily come by like you can definitely do a little bit of farming but as we said before energy is an issue food hunger all that is an issue so you kind of have to you can't just go out for long periods of time because you're going to deplete your resources especially early on by the way and you know, you do get this kind of good repetition where you understand that right when you're going to go to bed, you fill your stomach up, you, you know, drink all the water you can. And then when you wake up, you're going to have your uh, energy and your health are going to be maxed out. But it just seems like a lot of time in the early part of the game, you spend so much of your time eating, drinking, and sleeping. Basically, it sounds like my life now. <laughs> but no, um, you definitely like have this issue where you want to push forward and you want to keep going, but you just can't get the resources to craft the items you need to push the story along. And the vendors are only open certain days and they only restock certain days. And it's basically every couple days. So you can buy them out and still need a lot more of an item. Like um, hair strands were an issue for me. Like really early on, I was trying, I had to make fences for something and it requires hair strands. I couldn't find any off of any enemies and I bought the, the, pl the one place out and I had to wait like three days before I finally was able to do it. And it was like the only thing for me to do. And so there's a lot of issues like that that come across with this game. Now, there's a lot of crafting that I think is great and a lot of really cool ideas as well. And I will say, too, when you build like a shed or someplace to keep your your materials, I like the fact that you can craft and you don't actually have to have the materials on hand. Some games do that and that super irritates me. I get it, but at the same time, I like the fact that I don't have to worry about it. I can go out, I can farm, and I can just bring all my materials, throw them in my shed, and I can still craft with them like they're in my inventory. There again, the, the crafting goes from so many different aspects of weapon making and farming and farmland and different like resources that you could use as far as like structures and stuff for your like little farm... <laughs> apocalypse house you know two zombie crafting which is really awesome so uh, probably one of my favorite parts of this game is frankie farming yes so frankies are zombies you have the ability to control them and they become like your army but you have to basically obtain a corpse and plant the corpse and it'll come back up a frankie and you can pretty much use these guys for a multitude of things you can just have them you know hang out next to you and, and fight enemies with you or you can through zombie crafting turn them into like allies i should say with like you know guns or different different items i don't want to go too far into it but it's you can make them into like a cluster of zombies that you like basically it works like a giant ball like, there's some major damage and some really cool aspects of the whole like frankie system as i call it and that has been one of the funnest things to do now i will say like the aspect of crafting and and especially zombie crafting and farming and 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 all and farming and farming materials all of that really does make this game really fun but it is a slow burn it's a very slow burn and if you're looking for something really fast paced and you want to just get into the story and you want to be able to fight tons of enemies uh you have to wait a little bit uh, you're gonna have to build your character up you're gonna have to like crawl before you walk essentially and that does become an issue to be honest and i would also say the other thing too that i part of the reason why 
a lot of these other aspects of the game are so good it's because the story is really lackluster like there isn't a lot there and doesn't make you really care too much and even if you did there's so much time between story because every maybe third mission has to do with the story and a lot of it is like fetch quests or you know um essentially a tutorial that they're walking you through which i appreciate because there is a lot to this game but at the same time you kind of forget why you're supposed to be attacking this person and you barely even know why you're attacking nebron in the first place or why you really care again you do find out little bits little bits and you know it, it, it is more i would say of an action gameplay slash survival farming game more than it has like a narrative driven game about it now one thing I will say, um, a lot of people have complained because you have to run back to your house a lot. That's really only early on. Once you unlock zombie crafting, you can unlock an item that basically allows you to fast travel. So there's that. Remember that that's a great tip to have that early on. And I will say the other issue too is there is a lock-on mechanism. But the lock-on isn't great. And half the time the combat is so fast-paced that you really... The lock-on almost does more damage than it does good. But at the same time, there's elements elements of where you're just like swinging wildly with a weapon and you're not very accurate as where the guns they use like a twin stick shooter kind of control and that plays out really well at least it did for me like I really appreciated the guns but again with the guns it comes more resources more material you kind of have to do more farming to be able to have enough gunpowder to have enough bullets and all of that but uh, I was really like I said it's torn on this game I I was already uh Friday morning to come out and say that this game kind of sucks and I just you know dismantled is better and I was really let down by it and by this afternoon you know give it a good I don't know 28 30 some hours later I started to it started to really open up and I started to really enjoy more and more about the game again I haven't beat the game uh I'm, I'm really I'd say like I'm 25 hours into it I think I'm really close to being done with it but I like to mess around quite a bit and you know unlock things and so yeah I, I would say like if you're if you think you would like this kind of game and it, essentially it's like Diablo meets Borderlands beats meets Stardew Valley meets like Minecraft sort of like old school Minecraft you know it's survival aspect um then you'd be into this and that sounds like a pretty good combo I will say sometimes though it's not full like if you were expecting like a full farm simulator you're not going to get that if you're expecting like a full like dungeon crawler you know hack and slash loot collecting game you're not really going to get that you're going to be disappointed because the pacing isn't as fast and but i think it kind of mixes a lot of those elements together and honestly i like it i really do like it i i would i would say this game this game gets really good marks for me if i was gonna go one through ten i don't know i'd probably give it like a seven 7.5 actually yeah, that's a good mark like like there's room to grow but they've done really well with this game anyway that's my thoughts i'm curious if any of you guys are picking it up or thinking about picking it up um and what games you're playing let me know and uh again i appreciate each and every one of you please hit that like and subscribe button that means the world to me and like always i'm wishing you guys health wealth and above all i hope you're truly happy take care guys uh, rawr, i'm a zombie